Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel paper. This question here is about the sketch of a curve C which has equation y equals f of x, where they've told us f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 cubed times e to the power of negative 4x. First of all, they asked us to show that f dash of x is equal to a times 2x plus 1 squared times 1 minus 4x times e to the power of minus 4x. So this is um, a question where we have to differentiate. Now, a lot of people, I don't know why, but it, it happens quite often. They misread this and they think that they're asking for the inverse function. Okay, this is not the inverse function. This is the first differential. This is the gradient function. This means you have to, to get from f to f dash of x, we have to differentiate this function. So here we have to differentiate f of x. So f of x is equal to, as we can see, 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 times e to the power of minus 4x. Here we have a situation where you have a function inside a function, but then multiplied by another function inside a function. So you have basically two separate products which are not related to each other okay um, you know they're not related to each other it's not like th this function is inside that function or anything like that so therefore we have to use what's called the product rule okay so we call one of the products u in this case it could be either it doesn't really matter and we call the other one v okay so one of them plus 1 to the power of 3 is u and v is e to the power of minus 4x. And we've got to differentiate each of these okay, um, separate products. So if I differentiate this, this is you know, a, like a bracket to the power of something. So this is a type of polynomial function, a power function you could say, where you have to multiply by the power. The bracket stays as it is, but you reduce the power by 1. And then you, 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 by the chain rule, you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. You, you, you multiply by the differential of 2x plus 1, which is going to be 2. So you end up with u dash is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6, times 2x plus 1 squared. And v dash is going to be this differentiated. Now, when you differentiate e to the power of something, it stays as it is. So the first step is you just keep it exactly as it is. That's how e to the power of something differentiates. There's no multiplying by the power, adding one to the power, stuff like that here at all. Okay, it just stays as it is. But then you have to use the chain rule again. So you take what's inside the function, which is this minus 4x. You differentiate that, which gives you minus 4. And you multiply the function by that. So it's minus 4 times e to the power of minus 4x. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to multiply um, v by u dash. I like to do it this way. A lot of people do it a different way. I like to do it this way. Why is that not? One second. I'll just write it down here. So I have v dash equals minus 4 e to the power of 4 minus 4x. Okay, so I'm going to multiply v by u dash and u by v dash. You multiply across. So I'm going to multiply these two first. So I'll have e to the power of minus 4x times 6 2x plus 1 squared plus, and then I'm going to have these two multiplied which is going to be 2x plus 1 cubed times minus 4 e to the power of minus 4x okay so this is this is f dash of x okay v times u dash plus u times v dash uh, most of the formula books will say u times v dash plus v times u dash i like to do this way um, it doesn't really matter for the product rule it doesn't matter at all and the reason why I like to do it this way is because the, 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 the quotient rule, when you have one divided by the other, you have to do it in this order. You have to this times that minus these two multiplied. Okay, so it has to be in this order for the quotient rule. So that's why I like to do it the same order for the product rule. So it's kind of like consistent. Okay, so now this is going to be 6 e to the power of minus 4x times 2x plus 1 squared. And this is going to be minus 4 e to the power of minus 4x times 2x plus 1 cubed. Now, we have to give our answer in this form. And this is where a lot of students have, have issues. How does this become that? Okay, well, it can be done by factorizing. And some people don't know how to factorize such type of 
expressions, but it's very, very much quite, it's quite easy. So first, let's look at the numbers. Look, high, look at, we're going to look for the highest common factor in terms of each different type of term. So from the numbers, it's going to be between six and four. Well, the highest common factor is going to be two. All right, so we have two. And then you've got common e to the power of minus 4x. Well, that's common in each of the terms. So that's going to be e to the power of minus 4x. And then you have the same bracket, but to different powers. Now, the highest common factor is always the one with the lower power, like x squared and x cubed. The, the highest common factor is going to be x squared. So here, the highest common factor is going to be 2x plus 1 squared. That's the highest common factor. So this is, in total, the highest common factor of these two terms. I'm going to open a bracket. I'm going to say, okay, to, I need to get, I need to go over here. The first term has to be whatever I have to multiply this by to give me that. So let's think about this. We've got to multiply the 2 by 3. e to the power of minus 4x is there as it is. 2x plus 1 squared is there as it is. So that's it. If I multiply this by 3, I get that term. Then I've got to think about this term. So of course it has to be negative. So I'll write minus. 2 multiplied by 2 is going to give me 4, 4, so I have to have a 2 here. This is already there. If I multiply this by this, I'm going to have e to the power of minus 4x. But this, I have to multiply it by another 2x plus 1, so that when I when I multiply these together, I'm going to get 2x plus 1 cubed. So I have to multiply by another 2x plus 1. That leaves us with something that looks like this. So you have 2 e to the power of minus 4x times 2x plus 1 squared times and if you expand this bracket here you have 3 minus 4x and you have minus 2 okay so if you look at what we have to show it's going to be exactly that 1 minus 4x this is going to be 1 minus 4x okay so we can say that this is equal to um, 2 times e to the power of minus 4x times 2x plus 1 squared times it's going to be 1 minus 4x so that's exactly what we had to show, but I'll just write it in exactly the same format. They want just the a to be written as two, as you know, as what it is. So a is equal to two. We found that, and the e to the power of minus four x to be written at the end. So I'll just do it that way. So the way that they want us to write it in the end is e is two times, sorry, two times two x plus one squared times one minus four x times e to the power of negative four x, and that <clears throat> sorry, that's what they wanted us to show. Okay, so we found that the A is equal to 2. All right, so there's the answer to part A, just simply using the product rule and the chain rule together. Okay, now for part B. Now we've worked out that this A is 2 now, so I'll just write a 2 in this place. Okay, so this is now 2. Okay. All right, and this is the original function. So it says, hence, meaning using this result that we just found, find the exact coordinates of the two stationary points on C. Okay, so we can see, actually, from the curve, and I'm going to actually take this, because I've got a copy of it down here. I'll just copy and paste it up there, so we can see what's happening. Okay, so we can see from this, let me get rid of that, actually. All right, we can see from this that our curve has turning points, okay, two stationary points. One is at this point over here, and one is at that point over here. This is actually a point of inflection, okay. In both these points, what we know is at the stationary points, at the stationary points, what we know is the gradient is equal to zero. So f dash of x is equal to zero, okay, at these two points. All right, where the great where the curve becomes a zero gradient and then it goes back up here it turns at the point where it turns that's a zero gradient okay so we got to solve the equation two times 2x plus 1 squared times 1 minus 4x times e to the power of minus 4x is equal to zero so it's like everything's factorized for us here right i can divide by two that will become zero or well, one sorry all right we, we can get rid of that but now we can say that either 2x plus 1 squared is equal to 0, or 1 minus 4x is equal to 0, or e to the power of minus 4x is equal to 0. All right, now this has no solution. All right, because e to the power of minus 4x will look something like this. 
okay and it will never touch the x-axis so that has no solution but here we're going to have a solution 1 minus 4x equals 0 so we can say 4x equals 1 so x equals a quarter and here we're going to have in fact a double solution a repeated solution so you have 2x plus 1 equals 0 you can say twice so 2x equals minus 1 so x equals minus a half and that's where we have the point of inflection here you'll see you end up with this double solution so x equals minus a half so this is where x equals minus a half and this is where x equals a quarter right so those are the coordinates of the points where we're going to have the stationary points so we want to find the exact coordinates so we use let's start with x equals minus a half we know that our equation for y is this okay so we know this is our equation for y so f of x can be written as y so this is like y equals so we can say when x equals minus a half y equals two times minus a half plus one all cubed times e to the power of minus four times minus a half that's going to give you two times uh, minus a half which is going to be minus one so you'll end up with minus one okay which is zero and as we can actually see from the uh, you know um from the graph from the graph this is going to be where y equals zero we can see that actually from the graph so you have minus a half and zero so it's just this calculation just confirms our understanding that this is one of the stationary points okay and it's on the x-axis so that's why you know the y coordinate is zero so that's one of them and the other one is when x equals a quarter so y equals two times a quarter okay plus one and that's going to be cubed times e e to the power of minus four times um a quarter four times a quarter meter minus four times positive a quarter okay so that's going to give you two times a quarter which is a half a half plus one which is three over two so that's three over two to the power of three times e to the power of negative one so that's going to give you no, um, 3 cubed is 27 over 2 cubed is 8. And this is going to be underneath, so it's going to be e to the power of 1. So 27 over, 27 over 8e. So the other point is going to be when x equals a quarter and y equals 27 over 80. They said the exact coordinates, so we gave them in terms of e. We didn't find the decimal value. It says exact. That's very important for us to realize. We don't then round it to 3SF or anything like that. We leave it in this exact form in terms of e. Okay, so there's, these are the two stationary points um, on this curve. That's part B. Then part C says the function G is defined by 8 times f of x minus 2. 8 times f of x minus 2. Find the coordinates of the maximum stationary point on the curve with y equals g of x. Okay, so we can see that the transformation here that's taken place involves two things. It involves this which is a horizontal translation of factor 2 so it's going to be a translation of 2 0 translation it's inside the function okay if, it, if it's something added added or subtracted is a translation if it's outside the function it's in the y-axis so, okay so in the y y direction so if it, if it was fx minus 2 it would be y direction and it would be normal 2 minus 2 means down 2 but if it's inside the bracket then it affects the x coordinate only, okay, and it acts opposite. So if it says minus two x minus two, you, yeah, you make it go two to the right, not to the left. So the, the the vector will be two zero, a translation. And the second thing that's happening is you have eight times f x minus two, okay, which means it's a vertical stretch, okay, of scale factor equals eight. So the maximum. Is going to just be this this the maximum of f of x will be a maximum of g of x with which with transformed coordinates but it will still be the maximum because it is you know it's 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 not going to be like something which has been translated reflected you know in the y in the x axis or anything so it's going to be still a maximum so if we take the point that we have the maximum which is a quarter and 27 over 8 e the e is underneath by the way with the eight all right, so we take this point and we start with the first transformation, which is f x minus 2. So 
What happens to the X coordinate? You're going to add two to it. The Y coordinate will not change. Okay, so that's the first thing. All right, so you'll end up with a quarter plus two. That's a quarter plus, um, you can say, eight over four. That's nine over four. And 27 over 80. Okay, that's two and a quarter, nine over four. All right, so that's what th that becomes. That's after step one. And then step two is going to do eight times fx minus two. Now we're going to, here we're concentrating on, on this part. Now we're concentrating on this part. All right, so you always start with what's inside the function, and then you go to what's outside. Always start with what the, the horizontal transformations, then the vertical ones. Okay, so now we're going to multiply by, eight. even if sometimes it doesn't make a difference, like in this case, it probably wouldn't make a difference. Okay, but you should always have that in your mind because sometimes it does make a difference. So have the idea that we start with what's inside the function and you do the opposite of bid mass. So you're going to do dealing with the additions and subtractions first inside the function, then the multiplications. In this case, there's no problem there. It's just a subtraction. And then you go to outside the function and you deal with things in the same order as bid mass. Again, there's only one operation here with multiplication. So you only deal with that one. But here what happens is the x coordinates are unchanged, but the y coordinates, you multiply each of them by 8. This is going to be 27 over 8e multiplied by 8. So you end up with your final coordinate. The final answer will be 9 over 4 and 27 over e. The 8s will cancel out. So this will be your answer for this question, part C of question number 8 from the June 2023, Pure Mathematics P3 paper from LXL, International A-Level. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here in this area. Other questions from uh, the topic of, I guess this is under two different topics. One of them is differentiation. And the other one is, I guess, transformations. All right. So it's kind of to do with the start transformation. So I'll put it under both playlists. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link up here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.